this is a sellout crowd at St. Jones. There's something like 450 people who signed up, paid tickets, and come. The, the uh, church is jammed, and we'll be starting the main presentation shortly. missing our speaker for about two minutes. She'll be right back, but I just wanted to say, for those who are standing, if there's a seat available, why don't you just take it? Someone told me there was an order to it. I didn't know that there was an order. So I suppose if you have a high ticket, you should wait a minute.
Good evening, friends. Wow. I mean, wow. Do you know how many churches would give their eye teeth to be this full? Well, if you invite the people that people want to hear, this is what happens. Um, my name is Julie Madden. I'm on staff here at St. Joan of Arc. It is such an honor to welcome all of you here this evening. Um, and to welcome our very honored guest, Malalai Joya, especially for those of us from the Christian tradition during this time of Lent, when we are really called to examine our lives, to repent where we need to repent, and to change what we need to change, both individually and collectively. And I can think of no better time of year to hear from the prophetic voice that we are about to hear. Two details, if you are new to us, the restrooms are down those stairs or down that hall. And I believe we will be, um, Malalai Joya will be signing some books here. I want you to be very aware that there are two steps leading up to this level and it's an optical delusion on your way up here, so please be careful. And. Of course, please take a moment to turn off the ubiquitous cell phones. Yes, excellent. Several thanks are in order. First of all, to our stage manager and sound technician, Steve Kramer, who makes everything work. Um, to the maintenance staff here at St. Joan of Arc, who make everything work. Uh, to Women Against Military Madness, who, yes. I'd like to thank WAM for giving us the opportunity to host this event, and I would like to thank them for their constant witness and presence in our community, showing us a better way to be together. And finally, uh, I'd like to thank all of you, particularly those of you who helped secure a travel visa for Malalai Joya, because otherwise we'd be turned around and trying to get her on Skype. Um, finally, it's my honor to introduce with much gratitude the tireless and amazing Marie Brown. Good evening. I want to join with Julie in thanking all of you for being here. And I appreciate she did much of the things that I was going to do too, so of the staff. But I will say too, uh, we thank the staff of St. Jones uh, for being here and for making all of this work for us tonight. Uh, and we thank the Church of St. Joan of Arc for always giving space for peace voices. Whenever I call St. Joan of Arc and say, I need a space, if it's at all possible, they will give it to me. And thank you. Thank you, David. I also want to thank all the members of the Minnesota Alliance of Peacemakers and members of WAM who sold tickets for this event, because this is what made this happen. Some people went out, they invited their friends to come, and you are all here, and I thank them for that. This evening, I have the honor and the privilege of introducing our speaker, Malalai Joya. Malalai is on tour in the United States to promote the second edition of her autobiography, Raising My Voice, The Extraordinary Story of an Afghan Who Dared to Speak Out. This was initially published in the U.S. under the title, A Woman, A Woman Among Warlords. That's the book probably some of you have read. As many of you know, the U.S. government initially denied a travel visa to Ms. Joya, who has been a vocal critic 
of the UN-NATO war on her country. Supporters in the U.S. immediately mounted a protest campaign that included letters from the ACLU, groups of writers and academics, and nine members of con Congress, including our own Keith Ellison and Betty McCollum. <laughs> Senator Franken also called the embassy where she was trying to get her visa and sent a letter to the State Department. So we want to thank all of them for the help that they gave us to make sure that Malalai was with us tonight. There is so much that one could say about this incredible woman, and of course, not enough time to say it. So I am choosing to keep my introduction relatively short. Malalai was born in Farah province in western Afghanistan. In 1982, when she was four years old, her family fled Afghanistan to live as refugees in neighboring Iran and later in Pakistan. Returning to her home country of Afghanistan 16 years later after the Soviet withdrawal. Inspired in part by her father's activism, Ms. Joya became a social activist, beginning as a teacher in secret girls' schools, holding classes in a series of basements. She hid her books under her burqa so the Taliban couldn't find them. At a young age, she became director of a non-governmental women's group and established a free medical clinic and an orphanage in her impoverished home province of Farah for some of the children left parentless by the endless wars in Afghanistan. Malalai Joya gained international attention when, as an elected delegate at a constitutional assembly in Kabul in 2003, she stood up and denounced her country's powerful U.S. NATO backed warlords. She was only 25 years old. Two years later, she became the youngest person elected to Afghan's new parliament. In 2007, she was suspended from parliament for her persistent criticism of the warlords, the drug barons, and their cronies. She said they didn't belong there. Her suspension generated international protests and appeals for her reinstatement have been signed for, by high profile writers and intellectuals, such as Noam Chomsky and politicians, including members of the parliaments from Canada, Germany, the United Kingdom, Italy, and Spain. Since her suspension, Malalai Joya has continued to be an outspoken critic of warlords, fundamentalists, the Taliban, and the U.S. occupation of Afghanistan. She is a staunch defender of human rights and a powerful voice for the women of Afghanistan. In 2010, Time magazine named her one of the 10 most influential people in the world. Foreign Policy magazine listed Joya in its annual list of top 100 global thinkers, and she was named one of, of Guardian newspaper, the Guardian from England, top 100 activists and campaigners just last month. She is the subject of the documentary Enemies of Happiness, which won the World Cinema Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival and the International Human Rights Film Award at the Berlin International Film Festival. She has received many, many international awards and, rec and recognitions for her efforts for human rights, justice, and democracy in Afghanistan. And I'm not going to tell you about them or we would be here all night. Malalai Joya's willingness to speak out against injustice and the powers that dominate the political scene in Afghanistan have come at a high price for her personally. 
She has been physically and verbally attacked by fellow members of the parliament. She has received many death threats and has survived four actual assassination attempts. However, she will not be deterred. In response to such threats, Joya has stated, never again will I whisper in the shadows of intimidation. I am but a symbol of my people's struggle and a servant to their cause. And if I were to be killed for what I believe in, then let my blood be the bacon beacon for emancipation and my words a revolutionary paradigm for generations to come. She said, you can cut the flower, but you cannot come, cut, or you cannot stop the coming of spring. Please welcome Malalai Joya. everyone very nice to meet you all first of all I would like dear friends and supporters of Twin Cities Peace Campaign and Vim who organized this event and invited me here on behalf of suffer poor people of my country uh, to talk about the ongoing tragedy in my crying country about the realities of the so-called war on terror by US and NATO and also about the brutalities of Islamic fundamentalists. As our friend mentioned about denying of my visa before to start my speech about the catastrophic situation of my country, let me say a few sentences about the reason of refusing of visa. I think it has a political reason because uh, not only in the U.S. each time when I traveled in the past, also when I attended some international conferences on behalf of my people in some other Western countries, I go, I expose the wrong policies of the warmongers who commit crimes in my country under the name of democracy, women rights, human rights. I inform justice-loving people of the U.S. and around the world about the wrongdoing of their government, about the taxpayer money, billions of dollars that their government sent to Karzai's puppet mafia corrupt regime. Most of these money goes into the pocket of these warlords, stragglers, criminals, even indirectly Taliban. And also, I informed them that it was the US government in NATO that after 9-11 tragedy, they pushed us from the frying pan into the fire because they replaced Taliban, these terrorists, with fundamentalist warlords who are photocopy of the Taliban. From 92 to 96, they were in power with, and committed many crimes in the civil war in my country. Alone in Kabul city, they killed more than 65,000 innocent people. Same like Taliban, many crimes against women rights, human rights, but after 9-11, with mask of democracy, with suit and tie, they imposed on my people. That's why today's situation day by day goes from worse to worse. And I think this is something that the warmongers in White House, they can't bear as they try to use their huge propaganda machine, the corporate media, to hide these bitter realities from your eyes. But I want to tell you that a few years ago, US government imposed ban on my travel abroad. And now, um, sorry, U.S. puppet regime, I mean Karzai's regime in Kabul, and now U.S. government banned me. Uh, they want to block my voice. I want to tell you from U.S. Tribune that they never can block my voice, and they never can stop me from spreading my message around the world against occupation for democracy and peace. Thank you. 
while the Western governments, they are bombing and killing innocent civilians, people of my country, under the name of so-called war on terror. But we are so honored, so happy, and I'm speechless on behalf of my people for solidarity, that, that great people of these countries stand in solidarity with my people, with the poor, suffer people of my country, raise their voice against the wrong policy of their government. If you have a warmonger like Obama and a criminal like Bush, but you should be very honored that you have Professor Noam Chomsky and many Chomsky like you, that they raise their voice against the wrongdoing of their government against war and war crimes. Ten years ago, US and NATO invaded my country under the banner of women rights, human rights. And today's situation of women is as catastrophic as it was under the domination of the Taliban. While there are many media hypes in the West about improving women condition, but the women of Afghanistan in many provinces, even they do not have even hu human life. Killing of women that much easy for the warlords in Taliban like killing a bird. Rape cases, domestic violences, acid attacks, burning the schools, pies in the girls' schools, and many, many other miseries and violences increasing rapidly, even historical. Maybe you'll hear the story of Bibi Aisha in Time magazine that the headline says, what happens to the women of Afghanistan if we leave? But I'm telling you on behalf of my people, it was better if they wrote what's happening to the women of Afghanistan while we are there. And even they misuse from the miseries of the women of my country for their propaganda machine. Never they bring those disfigured women and children that when they use cluster bomb and white phosphorus for treatment here in Western countries. Why? Because their war crimes, their brutalities will well expose to justice-loving people of these countries. Many people ask me how they can help Afghan women. Firstly, war will never help Afghan women, not only women, men and women. Secondly, if the US government and NATO they let us a little bit break in peace, then we know what to do with our destiny. And I'm sure progressive Afghan men will stand in solidarity with us. During these 10 years of occupation, even the women of my country, they didn't got the limited rights they enjoyed in century of 60s and 70s. During these nine years of occupation, tens of thousands of innocent civilians has been killed, most of them innocent men, women, and children. And not only these troops, occupation forces, they are brutally killing my people, even making fun with their dead bodies. Maybe you hear the report of Spiegel with these heartbreaking photos. And I think these photos, it is true that these photos are new, but the murders is not new for my people. And they tell you that we bring to court some of those soldiers, cruel soldiers, who commit this crime. I think it's just priceless because those who order and send these troops and Afghanistan occupation forces to bomb and kill my people, they must be brought to the court. This minister of the war, Robert Gates, in general, David Petrius, must be brought to the court first of all. In my own province, in Farah last year, they did bomb. In one day, 150 civilians has been killed, most of them women and children, even used white phosphorus, even bombing our wedding parties, what they did in Ningarhar in Nuristan. Recently, in Kunar province, 65 innocent civilians has been killed, again, most of them women and children, more than each of us against Taliban, against terrorism. Nine children, again, in the same province has been killed. After all of these massacres, White House says, apologize. Kaiser's puppet regime, this mafia regime says, thank you, that is it. I think the blood of my people is not water that they shed. It war as much as the blood of Westerner wars. 
We further from listening this apologize and thank you. We want the end of this occupation as soon as possible. When Obama took office, unfortunately, his first news for my people was more conflict, more war. When you follow the foreign policy of Obama's administration, the surge of troops, the outcome was more miseries, more massacres, more tragedies. As a tip of the iceberg, only a few examples of these massacres I told you. Now, he invited these terrorists, Taliban, and Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, this fascist man who has name is in the blacklist to join this puppet misogynist regime. So the situation for my people will be more bloody, more disaster if they come in power, especially for the women. And now he's expanding war in Iraq, in Pakistan, in Yemen, and even start right now this brutal war in Libya as well. Since Obama came in power, 24% the deaths, civilian death tolls increased when you compare with Bush administration. At least these are few reasons, briefly, what I told you. That, that's why for my people, Obama is just a second and dangerous push. It seems that shedding blood of countless innocent people was not enough in Afghanistan that now they start this war, this brutal war in Libya as well. And this is the responsibility of justice-loving great people of the U.S. around the world, anti-war movements, peace-loving organizations, that they should raise their voice against this wrong policy. And do not let these warmongers to shed more the blood of these innocent people in that country as well. And while the U.S. people are suffering as a result of the economy crisis and living conditions are getting worse, the Pentagon wages another war which will only benefit the U.S. corporate and billionaires to loot the oil and other riches of Libya. Obama's administration raised hue and cry against Qazafi regime, but in the meantime, support much more dirtier Qazafi's regime, criminal regimes in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Saudi Arabia, in Israel, and also Pakistan, many other countries. And I'm sure what they are doing, maybe you also hear there's news that trying to bring dirtier Qazafi in power in Libya. Same what they did in Afghanistan and Iraq. The document released by WikiLeaks exposed the treachery of the U.S. government can prove what I have been saying about war in my country, the so-called war on terror. And as much as they kill innocent civilians, day by day more people come on the streets and raise their voice against occupation. But who will listen to the voice of these voiceless people? Because this puppet regime is full of corrupt warlords, drug lords, and these criminals who have killed, tortured, and looted our people for the case as I said earlier. And now Afghanistan is ranked 181st out of 182 countries in the Human Development Index. And according to the Mines Minister, Afghanistan is sitting on around 3 trillion of mineral deposits, but because it's the second most corrupt country in the world, the, most, the income of these mines would fill the pockets of these government officials, these warlords, drug lords, and also their foreign masters. In these nine years, they changed my country to the center of the drug. 93% of opium today produced from Afghanistan. Since 2001, there's official report that 4,400% opium increased. Even New York Times gave report brother of Hamid Karzai, Ahmed Wali Karzai, is a famous drug trafficker and also in the payroll of CIA. My people call him a small bush in Kandahar province. And billions of dollars of this money to dirty business of opium not only benefit Afghan warlords and also these drug lords, goes to the pocket of their foreign master as well, found its way on the Western countries as well. U.S. and NATO tried to fool Afghan peoples and also their own people too. 
by telling you that we are leaving Afghanistan, we will leave Afghanistan by mid of 2011, which is a big lie. From another hand, the puppet regime of Kazi is speaking about permanent military bases in my country, which is clear they will not leave my country soon. They are there because of their own strategic, regional, political, and economic interests. No question that we need helping hand, but it never means we want occupation. They keep situation in danger, lawless, unsafe, insecure, especially for the women, then they have very good excuse for you to stay there longer for their own interests. When Afghan in Afghanistan, make their military bases powerful, very easily they can control other Asian powers like Iran, China, Russia, etc. Then very easily they will have access to the gas and oil of the Central Asian Republics. It was one of the main projects of the CIA to change my country to the center of drug, as you saw that they become successful by support of these drug laws. No one can believe that a superpower with massive military machine really unable to defeat a bunch of killers, terrorists like Taliban, who created by US government, by support of ISI, financial support of Saudi Arabia, and their domination destroyed as well again by US government mainly, and still they are playing the game of Tom and Jerry with these terrorists, and support them uh, through, indirectly through uh, Pakistan government. I mean eyesight. I think justice-loving people of these countries and US especially around the world, they agree with my people that democracy never come by military invasion. Democracy never come by using white phosphorus cluster bomb. Democracy never come by bombing our parties and killing innocent civilians under the name of Taliban. And what they are doing in my country day by day, play more with the destiny of these suffer people of my country. Right now, there is two kinds of resistance. One is reactionary resistance of the Taliban, that always the mainstream media, especially the mouthpiece of these warmongers, try to make a mountain out of a molehill. But never they give report about the second kind of resistance, which is a hope for the future of Afghanistan. Resistance of ordinary Afghan people, men and women. Resistance of students of the universities. 19 members of one student of the university in one day has been killed by this blind bombardment of US and NATO troops. All students, when they hear this news in Kabul, they come on the streets with banners against occupation. Who listen their voice? and also some resistance of some few democratic parties that we have, more than parties intellectuals. They never give you these reports. I believe the only solution for the situation of my country, for Afghanistan, is that troops should withdraw, because their presence is making our fight for justice much harder by empowering reactionary, brutal, and dark-minded forces that are great obstacles for the true democratic-minded elements. And they will be more powerful day by day and more dangerous and create more miseries. And now my people, they scratch between three enemies, occupation forces, warlord, Taliban. With the withdrawal of occupation forces, we will fight two internal enemies instead of three. At least the backbone of these warlords and Taliban will break if, honestly, they leave my country if honestly do not give dollars and gun to these dirty-minded elements. And my people, despite being wounded, tired, and hopeless of all the wars, will fight steadfastly till the end against the warlords and Taliban because of the hatred they have for them. And the history bears witness that only nations can liberate themselves. So, So I would like to ask all peace-loving, justice-seekers, and also democratic-minded organizations, groups, anti-war movements around the world and also in the US, that they are the one who should stand more in solidarity with my people, with the suffer people of my country. Especially we need their educational support, because I believe education is a key to our emancipation. Heartfelt thanks once again 
for your solidarity and support. Thank you. take questions in just a minute. Uh, what we're asking is that people write your questions on a card. I think you may have been told when you were coming in if you, had a, if you thought you might have a question to take a card. And um, if you don't have a card, raise your hand and we'll make sure you get one. In the meantime, Jacob Ali from Wham and Twin City Peace Campaign is going to speak for just a minute. Why don't you just sit down? Oh, yeah. It's an honor to be at the forum <coughs> with such a courageous individual as Malai Choya and all she is doing for the people of Afghanistan. I highly recommend that if you haven't, that you read her book, A Woman Among Warlords. This is the first edition. This is essential reading for anyone who wants to understand the situation in Afghanistan. She gives a first-hand account of all the tragic events and also some of the hopeful things that have been happening. And uh, you really get to know what it's like by somebody who has lived it. So I certainly encourage you to read this book. And she points out in the book, of course, that Afghanistan does not need the oppressive Taliban. They do not need the drug lords and the warlords and they do not need occupation by foreign troops. They need the people of Afghanistan working together and banding to work for women's rights, education, and economic assistance. This is where the future of the country lies. So we would just like to make a brief appeal here if you would like to help out the uh, Money collected will go to the Afghan Women's Union, which Malalai represents. If you make checks, make them out to the Twin Cities Peace Campaign. But let's see if we can encourage the great work that Malalai is doing and all the other people working with her to bring democracy and justice and nonviolent improvement in the lives of the people of Afghanistan. So we'll pay, pass out the baskets here for our appeal. Checks go to the Twin Cities Peace Campaign. Thank you. Just collecting the questions now, so should be just a minute or two. Um, so, do we have a second mic? I guess we don't. Do we have a second mic? Okay. Oh, we were gonna, We don't have a second mic. I don't. That's all right. That's okay. Is this the mic? Is this it? Okay. Uh, just so you know that the, the checks you make out to the Twin City Peace Campaign will go, of course, to the Afghan Women Project. So we'll consolidate that money. Yeah. All right, Malalai, will you run for parliament again? or be involved in the formation of a new political party to fight for justice? Uh, That's enough. Okay. Let's go. Keep them short. 
The election already be passed in Afghanistan. Um, Non-democratic, fraudulent, I believe the most ridiculous election. Maybe you also hear even international observers were speaking about widespread threat. And I received many invitation letters and people, they called me and they came to again run for this election. I, I told them that First, I boycotted the election like many other democratic-minded people of my country, millions of Afghan. They did not run in the election. And I didn't want that from my position, this puppet mafia corrupt regime get credit, will get credit, and also their foreign master. Because I believe election under the shade of gang, warlordism, drug lordism, awful corruption, and occupation forces has no legitimacy at all. We have a famous saying, it's not important who is voting, it's important who is counting. That's our problem. Even from inside of the system, one of my supporters called me, Malale, this time, if you ran for the election, I was in their meeting, that they do not let you to win. And it was, for me, understandable. I could imagine, because in the previous parliament, maybe you also hear that um, in the past, when I traveled in US, on behalf of my people, I did some interviews that they turned off my microphone, they beat at me even inside of parliament, even inside of parliament threatened to rape, finally expelled me, which was quite illegal act. Despite national international condemnation, I had defense lawyer, they did not allow me to go back. I wanted to go back to use from the tribune of the parliament for the benefit of my people, especially women. But this time, it cost that only I lost this tribune I didn't attend, but outside of parliament, next to my people, we continue I, to our struggle against these fundamentalists, also Taliban. And the second question was that, um, why I do not make party, or if I make party? People ask me, they come to my office in Kabul, while I'm living, living underground, but they are a group of especially young generation, like a network, who I trust them. And this few years, I know them. They are running my office, and they accept this big risk. And they tell me to, to make a party. I don't want that just to be a symbolic party. In this kind of situation, to make a party also not easy. In one hand, we have economic problem. In another hand, we have security problem and many other obstacles and problems. So I thought that it's better now raise awareness of the people, especially against um, these occupation in Taliban. While my people, their political consciousness improved a lot this 30 years war. But now we are like a network, we are working maybe in the future, um, we'll build a party. And now I'm thinking about this issue. Yes, and also one point that uh, um, e during the election, this non-democratic fraudulent election, even the dirtiest words, I received more death threats. More than myself, I was worried about those who will do campaign for me. And maybe you hear that when, during the election, one candidate, female candidate, so two campaigners of this female candidate has been killed. So it was also one reason that anyway, I boycott it and we do outside of parliament continue to our struggle. Yes. Can you comment on the attack against UN workers today where people were even beheaded? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I apologize for my listening this week, my English listening. Just the question if we very... Can you comment on the attack today on the UN workers? Did, did, you, did you know about that? Did you win? Oh, um, the last, uh, the today, last today, incident, today, yeah. Today. Yeah, I hear this. Um, you know that, uh, um, uh, I think it's also in US uh, country as well. I'm sure in some other countries as well that when they are in the world, there's many other miseries. They are doing something like uh, second-hand issues they are raising that to, to keep the mind of the people away from the main issues, these, all of these messages. For example, they are burning the Holy Quran, that the, the people, of course, that are, especially in Muslim country, most of them are Muslim, they stand up and they cannot tolerate this. 
So more, I think, as always, I'm saying the problem of my people is not with Islam at all. The problem of my people is with political Islam of Osama bin Laden, Mullah Omar, Sayyaf, Kanuni, Rabbani, Dostum, Ismail Khan, all of these dirty-minded elements, misogynists, mix Islam with politics as a weapon use it against our people. And still they do the same. And I think this is the wrong politician they are doing that, of course, behind of this last incident uh, that a UN activist also has been killed in some soldier, I'm sure that the hand of these wrong politicians, the warmongers, that who did this. Uh, what do you think about Greg Mortensen? Greg Mor Mortensen, <laughs> I mean, you mean the writer of the cap of the tree, three cups of tea, sorry. Um, I didn't meet him in person. Uh, the book uh, I hear from my supporters is a good book. But unfortunately, I hear that he became a pro-occupation, pro-war person. Hopefully, will not be right. If I meet him, and of course, the first sentence I will tell him that please don't share the crimes of these criminals. Don't try to be warmonger. Follow the policy of the warmongers. And as a person who, how much education is important, the key in a society, every society, not only in Afghanistan, everywhere. And you, through your book, especially you, explain the values of the education. And you showed the ways to, our, to the people how to. How, how education is important and build and have some project. But it's completely against education, against freedom and democracy, these values, if he become a pro-war and pro-occupation person. What gave you the courage to first stand up and speak? Oh, there's oh, first you. <laughs> Power of the people, not only in Afghanistan, in the world, I believe, is strongly. I agree with Patrick Tyler. He says in the world is two superpower. Besides US government, the world public opinion. That's why they are afraid and they, through propaganda machine, put dust on their eyes. The support of these poor, suffer people of my country, especially women, victim families, that group, group, I made them in couple in my office. The, the history of my country, we have proud full history that gives us hope, courage, determination. We had hero and heroine in Afghanistan. Still we have secret hero and heroine who are giving us hopes and resistance of my people is hope and giving us courage. And there are many other reasons that gives us hope, courage, determination, not sit silent. Is torture still going on in Afghanistan by the USA? I think torture, I said um, briefly, and not only torture, I think it's just an easy war, just war crime. They are bombing through blind bombardment, killing the people, most of the innocent people. So still they continue the strong policy. I told you even they invite Taliban and um, warlord, to, sorry, this. Um, Gulbuddin Hakmati are also to join the government. And what we have been saying, you can see the documents of the WikiLeaks exposed always. Anyway, uh, which is clear, they are not honest for my people. And again, my message to you is that when we want the withdrawal of the troops, but you are the one who should stand more in solidarity with my people. We wish it was not military invasion. It was invasion of schools, clinic, hospital. Of course, we need the strategic war. They destroyed my country. How has organizing within Afghanistan against the US been affected by the events in Tunisia and Egypt? This glorious uprising which happened in some Middle East countries, even in the North African countries, it is a source of hope, inspiration, and more, gave more strength, more hope. I'm sure not only to people of Afghanistan, millions around the world. And it draws from the world crisis. And in my country, is a little different because in, in my country, most people, because of this brutal war, the years war, or most of them are non-educated. So it takes time in Afghanistan. That's why our responsibility is more, otherwise, before of this glorious uprising, it happened first in Afghanistan. 
and especially in neighbor country like Iran, the surprising against the fascist regime of Iran happening, it put more positive impact in Afghanistan. First of all, if democratic minded people, government come in power in Iran, the puppet of Iran um, who is in power in Afghanistan, very high post they have in Karzai's regime, like Ismail Khan, Mohakeh, Khalili, vice president of Karzai, they will be powerless. Their backbone will break, one of, their, one of the backbone. Anyway, um, but the only concern in these, uh, some country glorious uprising which happened uh, is there is not unity leadership. That's the point make me concerned that maybe to, to be mislead or misused. And also uh, the dictators removed, but the system is in power. That's the matter always make concern, especially in some countries like Egypt, they are fundamentalists or powerful. Even in, in Libya, as I said earlier, there are many other um, uh, freedom-loving persons, I mean democratic-minded, let's just say. They, in that during interview, they said that uh, they are trying to bring more criminal person, more brutal person than Kazafi in power. Same what they did in Iraq and Afghanistan. Replace one terrorist with another terrorist. If the U.S. and allied forces left tomorrow, what exactly would happen in Afghanistan? One enemy get lost. The backbone of these warlords and Taliban will break. These two is the key point. And my people will fight against Taliban and warlords. The hopeful point is that they hate the Taliban and also the warlords. Nobody says that when they leave Afghanistan, the situation will be like heaven. These 10 years, these the Taliban and warlords, these terrorists become powerful. Even Taliban indirectly, they had support of their foreign master. And now formally invite them to join the government. So um, we fed up. And now my people, they say, we don't expect anything good from you, just to stop wrongdoing. That much we fed up. So it makes no sense. Accept occupation, otherwise Taliban will eat us. Who carries the Taliban? Who, who, you know the background of the Taliban? Here is some book. Um, uh, can you, can you, where is the remote of this slideshow? Yeah, can, no, can you give me that re remote? Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's running? Oh no, I just, uh, there are some report I have, I wanted to show you. Um, some, some books that have been written about uh, some of these books I'm showing um, you the uh, uh, Yeah, this is, uh, I think I'm in the right way. <laughs> because I saw the slide too. <laughs> Before, <laughs> can you help me? Why it's not coming? Well, I wanted to show you the books. Yeah. We started it because we thought you wanted showing while you were answering questions. There's some books. Let me give you the name, then I will show you the 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 books. The one is the book of Robert Dreyfus. The name is Devil's Game. This democratic-minded person from U.S. A writer wrote that. You can read in this book how U.S. government, not only in Afghanistan, in countless Muslim countries, support these fundamentalists, created them, even sometimes exchange against U.S. government for to create more obstacles and eliminate democratic-minded people of these countries and also parties and intellectuals. And you can read the book as Eyes for Infidel, Katy Gannon wrote Ghost War, Bleeding Afghanistan, and many other books have been written. Hopefully my book also will help you to know better about these realities of so-called war on terror and role of especially U.S. government in Afghanistan. Anyway, um, I just wanted to show these books, <laughs> not coming. Uh, yeah, this is one book, Mina, the leader of one democratic-minded party. They are a feminist organization. They have their own activists, they are struggling. You can read this book. This is Devil's Game. This is a wonderful book. It helps you to know, especially U.S. wrong policy, not only in Afghanistan, many other. These are the books, Eyes for Infidel, and Blending Afghanistan and some other books. 
Yes, um, I, um, when you finish the question, here are some pictures, maybe will be a question for you. I really wanted to show to you. Do you want to show it now or after answer questions? Do you want me to show you now? Yeah. Oh, yes. Slow down. Slow down, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm too fast. بله جان کتاب اگه بانم خو وقت زایی بیشه پنگ پنگ دقیق کتاب I think only the name later you can read because it's just comment I made about some each of these books that introduced for you are just because of lack of time I apologize you know these are the pictures of these bunch of killers in the middle you can see only the name a little different maybe difficult for you that you can see in Human Rights Watch website, Amnesty International website, many books have been written and around these pictures, these photos, you can see example of the crimes of these criminals during the Civil War from 92 to 96. And these criminals with bloody hands, now they are in power. These are the pictures of during the, the so-called free election of Afghanistan. People, they true red color, the secret heroine, heroine of Afghanistan to the picture of this criminal, which is funny, one of these criminal uh, choose bodyguard for his large picture, like this, very huge pictures. That um, it shows that how they are freed from the resistance of the people. That's why US government and NATO support these dirty minded elements, because they are freed from resistance of my people. And this is, this is the so-called, Ne, uh, peace, ne, uh, so called. Chimigan Jerge Solhe Mashwaratira. Can you help me? National Peace Reconciliation, sorry. Under the name of National Peace Reconciliation, now there are serious uh, talk with the uh, so called peace talk with Taliban. I think it makes no sense, it's just fun of peace. You can see one, one bunch of terrorists ne, negotiate talk regarding the peace with bloody hands with another bunch of terrorists like Taliban. This is report about a drug. You can see 2011 how much Taliban, these terrorists, they are able to destroy opium. It was 185 metric ton. Sorry, this slideshow do not have something to show you. But there, you can see the report, official report, how it increased. Now 4,400% opium increase. And this is regarding receiving bribes, corruption, from the palace presidential store until the small office. And there, later, you can see that uh, these reports, these are the examples of the uh, US uh, outcome of the US and NATO troops, the occupation, outcome of the occupation, these blind bombardments. See, most of them, women and children. And in the middle picture, you can see that this is the one who they use white, for, uh, sorry, cluster bomb. And, uh, uh, sorry? Yeah, it is during this 10 years, the year if you want with the report, I can send it to you. In Kandahar province, this happened. And she was for a long time in the hospital. In my own province, they use white phosphorus. Even White House accepts that we use white phosphorus. No, no need for uh, more proof than this. And also, you can see this is proof that how, sorry, how the woman, mm, this picture, uh, the pic, oh. Yes. Anyway, that picture you saw earlier, this is the picture of the journalists, that the democratic-minded journalists of the West that they come, yeah, this picture. They come in Afghanistan in the century 60s, 70s, they made report that women how with Western clothes, with open hair, they played their role. At least they had limited rights. And also uh, come on the streets, but now this uh, 10 years of occupation, even women do not have human life, but shamelessly telling you, especially this Laura Bush, many times I hear that we brought first time women rights in the history of Afghanistan, which is a big lie. And this Time magazine, you, I told you earlier about, and this is a white phosphorus that they use in my own province, cluster bomb is that, that down, you can see the picture of this girl. So many children disabled, you know, they bored. This report also, I have a few one. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, same like Taliban time, you can see this picture. This woman in Ghazni province, they accuse as, it's in Ghazni or Badris, let me see. It's in Ghazni province. They, in public, 
these warlords, they accuse her, accuse her to uh, prostitution, then shoot, beat at her with lashes, same like Taliban time, then shoot on her head in public. Just jungle condition like Taliban time. It's only one example which I showed you, this one. She also was pregnant. This girl, you can see the one who covered the face, 12 years old, when going to school, they kidnap and rape her. And brave family of this girl make case. Not only nobody listened, their wives received death threats. In the meantime, after six months, more rape cases happened in the same province, in Sarapul province. And this girl has been raped by son of the member of the parliament, Haji Painda. He changed the age of his son less than 18 that do not be punished. And after that, I told you many more uh, happened. And another picture, you can see four years old baby. She has been raped in Balkh province. Anyway, many examples like this. If they will be the children of Obama, what will be the response? Again, they invite Taliban to join the government. Many other photos, anyway, heartbreaking photos. Yes. They never show these photos. My experience when I have interviews, especially mainstream media, they tell me, oh, Malala, these pictures are too much for our children to see. But how about the children of my country? People of my country, they, they even don't show the pictures. Uh, do you have any question? Yeah. Bali? Oh, your husband also martyred by these occupation forces. Can you stand up, my dear sister? I want to see you. This is Afghan sister. Yeah. Yes. My sister, uh, I want to tell you condolence, but let me tell you condolence is not enough. You know, my wish is that, and I hope that you will be more active to change, to exchange your sorrows, your strength, sorry, to exchange your sorrows to the strength and raise your voice against these warmongers. Anyway, say my message to you, justice-loving people of the U.S., to those suffer parents who lost their sons and their daughter in my country under the name of so-called war on terror. Again, say my message that to my Afghan people, to you as well, that please be, be more united, raise your voice more against the wrong policy of your government, contact democratic-minded politicians that to put pressure on the government to stop this wrong policy, this bombard, blind bombardment, these war crimes. Anyway, U.S. sorrow is my sorrow, the sorrows of my people. Thanks for all your support. And I will meet you later as well if you want, my sister. I really want to meet you later, yeah. Thank you.
sur la question. Yeah. Okay. The, thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. Uh, this question is, are, uh, what is the role for nonviolent action in Afghanistan uh, from the people, the resistance of the people? Mm -hmm. Do you understand the question? Yeah. yeah, you know, my people seem like every justice-loving people around the world, they, they, especially that they experience the, this brutal war and this gun, they fed up. I was one of those, I stand up against gun and gun laws, but now I have to have gun with myself to protect me, unfortunately. I hate this disgusting burqa, and I'm sure many people, women of Afghanistan, don't want to wear burqa, which is a symbol of oppression, but now gives us protection. <laughs> Sometimes I say to brave activist women, men of Afghanistan, that unfortunately you cannot be a broker. We really worry about their security more. We are underground. Anyway, but we have peace groups, not only Afghan peace groups that we have, and those who come on the streets, they do demonstration. It means that they hate the gun, they want peace. They are against occupation, they raise their voice. And some other, we have a group, if you want, I will show you not only Afghan, some foreign, honest foreigners, peace-loving foreigners, who even have some project and they have problems. Uh, Hakim is one of those you can see, head of one of these peace groups, and couple I met. Anyway, but let me tell you this point, that when somebody is occupied a country, same Taliban, sorry, same Russia when occupied Afghanistan, British in the past three times want to occupy Afghanistan, my people have to take the gun because they face with gun and these uh, warmongers kill them to save their freedom, to achieve their freedom. And same, if US and NATO do not stop this brutal war, this occupation, this war crime, with the passage of time, maybe my people will take gun or not, which is clear, they will not set silence and will give, give them also a good lesson which they gave in the past to the British and Russia. What do you think of the popular literature being written about Afghanistan? For example, the book, The Kite Runner, the bookseller of Kabul. The Kite, Nara, Kite Runner book is, yes, I know that quite um, famous enough, but the writer of the book, uh, unfortunately, uh, in the fan of Ahmed Shah Massoud. Ahmed Shah Massoud, my people call him Butcher of Afshar of Kabul. Ahmad Shah Massoud was the defense minister of the Gulbuddin Hakmatyar, this terrorist man who has named name is in the blacklist of the UN, US. And also, Ahmad Shah Massoud, as long as he was in power, he was close friends of these warlords. We have a, uh, we have a famous saying in Afghanistan, when you want to know a, a person, ask who is his close or her close friends when he was alive, or he is alive. And I think this few examples is enough that this was the CIA and French government especially that they made famous and also tried to impose Masood on my people as a so-called hero, as a hero. Even the, this corrupt mafia regime of Karzai because brother and creed of Masood, friends of Masood from his party and power, fundamentalist parties, they put the name of one streets of Kabul in the name of Masood, but still my people don't mention because they hate. The hero has been made by the people, not by foreigners. Uh, anyway, he's just, uh, now nobody there in Afghanistan to talk against Masood because brothers of Masood are in power. One brother of Masood, Zia Masood. Zia Masood, the vice president of Hamid Karzai. Recently, even WikiLeaks exposed one document says $52 million he took with himself from Dubai, sorry, from Kabul airport to the Dubai airport, but nobody stopped him. How you got this money, and we are we want to carry this money. This is only one example of their corruption. Put their crimes aside for a while. Anyway, which is, I want to tell you, do not be deceived. They're just any person, if it will be the kite runner writer, or any, per, uh, any other person will be. I condemn and I criticize. Hopefully this message go directly to him, and one day if I meet him, I will tell him as well. Uh, this is a question about the private U.S. security forces. Can you talk about their presence now and, and uh, what is promised about their withdrawal or what you expect will happen with them? 
private U.S. military. I yeah. think role as 10 years is enough. No need we talk. We waste our time. And even in WikiLeaks also exposed not only in Afghanistan and Iraq what they did. If for a second we forget Afghanistan as a human being, they are unforgivable and unforgettable for the crimes that they committed. Anyway, but uh, regarding Afghan National Army, nowadays mainstream media also telling you they are handing over the responsibilities to the Afghan National Army and Afghan police, which is like a trick they use like ca as cannon fodder to decrease the number of their own soldier casualties. The head of Afghan National Army, powerful warlords. It seems like the rabbit have responsible of the carrot. And they never let Afghanistan stand on its own feet. We, in the past, we had volunteer army. I know one of my supporters, let me tell you one example, a progressive doctor. She ha he had two small children, new marriage person. He has been kidnapped with the clothes of Afghan police. And then we received the dead bodies on the streets of Kabul. Because those, most of them, those who are in the, in the um, I mean, most of those who have high post in, in Afghan National Army, where the, uh, they are Malaysia, commanders of these warlords. Sometimes small fishes go to the jail, sharks free. And my people call Afghan National Army nowadays dollar army as well. Because the salary of a soldier is, sorry, uh, army is $200 per month, more than salary of a teacher, anyway. From your perspective, do you see any change in relations between India and Pakistan? You know, India and Pakistan is another story, same like Palestine and Kashmir. Anyway, that, uh, um, um, which, which is clear behind of this also the end of these uh, Western um, uh, warmongers. And same in my country, between my people or the victim. You know, government of India want to be more close to puppet regime of Karzai from another side, government of Pakistan as well. They are pretending we are friends and they, are, they have projects, they have their own puppets. Since Cold War they supported. Anyway, but let me tell you, when a little bit the government of Pakistan get closer to Karzai's regime, then um, suicide, um, suicide bombs happening uh, they blame that India did in, the, in front of the Pakistan embassy, another day in front of the Indian embassy. Maybe you hear tens of people get killed brutally. Between my people or the victim. Anyway, this is just chess game with big powers. Same in Palestine. You know what is happening in Palestine is really heartbreaking. And, and for everyone, I'm sure for millions around the world, and I condemn the Zionist regime of Israel for the crime committed. But unfortunately, Obama is silent. What's going on in Gaza today? Why do not raise the voice against these war mangers? But I'm not telling you like fundamentalists of Afghanistan also, they condemn, they are talking against the Zionist regime of Israel, but from very reactionary point of view. But I'm telling you that if from one side, if we condemn this, this, this Zionist regime of Israel and their brutal uh, in their crimes, but from another hand, uh, I'm, I admire and we are happy and hopefully will be more democratic-minded Israeli people that to stand up against the wrongdoing of their government, and I'm sure they are, but we, they must be more active. Anyway, but uh, they are unfortunately from the back, uh, some, some parties like Hamas also, they uh, hate the uh, Palestinian freedom-loving fighters. I believe even children of Palestine is the hero. I remember in my book also, you read this memory. I said once to my father in refugee camps, Father, we, be we belong to a war country like Afghanistan. I wish I was from Palestine. At least they are looked at how their children is brave. They are fighting with the stone, with empty hands against occupation. My father told me, my daughter, can I tell you something? Then I said, yes. Said, why you don't want to be Palestinian of your own country? Now my message to all of you is that, especially those who are fighting in the war countries against occupation, warmongers, fundamentalists, each of us should try to be Palestinian of our own country. Thank you. There are several questions about women in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, and this one is many Western feminist organizations have been in support of liberating Afghan women by, by, by war. 
Uh, many of these feminists have their hearts in the right place. What do you have? To, what would you say to one of them? To feminist Western countries? Yeah, that that, that think that that war is going to make it better. You've you've answered this, but if you could just say I, more about that. I just say one sentence. No need to waste our time. Those who are pro-occupation, pro-war. Anyway, I will tell them, put your feet in the shoes of Afghan people for a while, Afghan women. Those who, their daughters get raped, those who, they lose their dears by bombardment, these war crimes, anyway, through this occupation. Of course, I will, I will tell them this, and I will tell them this sentence that, please don't try to share the crimes of these criminals. When you support it means that you join their crimes, you share their crimes. Yeah. If it will be female or male, no question, gender is not important. Even in Afghanistan, a man come in power, a strong man, democratic-minded man, he, nobody able to, I, I, I mean that I'm, ho I'm sure that situation, especially for the woman, will improve, and women rights slowly will come in my country. Is your speech today uh, on the web? My speech is on the web? Is it? Uh, some, some you can see on, uh, I don't know exactly, this speech is on the web because now I start this trip uh, in a few other cities. I came from Chicago today, at 25th I arrived at night with Professor Nam Chomsky. It was one of my honor that I met him. Anyway, and I don't know if it's on my website or not, but uh, you can send this file my request to you. If they didn't put, they can put. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you hear? Did everybody hear that? It's live right now. Okay. And next Thursday on KFAI at 9:30. Next Thursday at 9.30 on KFAI on Don Olson's Northern Sun. I know you, you will have many questions, but you know we come here just for one day for a short time and even will be, will be, will be for hours, but finally I'm leaving. And here is, yes, I want to be, but you know now how much important. I love you all, but it's very important to be there, to do a struggle. Here uh, is my email. Facebook, to the world is so small, like a village. And you know, even we can campaign for uprising, same like in some other uh, Middle East, especially Middle East countries, this glorious uprising happened. Why we do not do in Afghanistan as well? We should be more united. When enemies, these war mongers get united, why we should not be united? We, sh we can be united, and if we try our best, we can be in contact by emails. And if, if you have any more questions, if you want now, I don't know how much time we have. We have time? No? Yes. So let me conclude our event with the quote of dear Martin Luther King, who I'm sure not only inspires me and many people of my country, millions around the world. He says that our lives begin to end the day we become silent. Freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. Thank you very much. going to sign them for you if you want. So go ahead and pick up your book and, and bring it back up here to the front for, for an autograph. What you do, I accept this. Somebody yeah, you want me to hold that? that. But you seem to have a lot of joy and peace about what you do too. When I see the love of the people, it gives me.
If you do that and then you click on uh, Facebook, I, I, I've got some of your stuff, what I got so far, I'll keep up with it. Thank you. Okay, Thank keep you up. So you're really tired. You're, you're a Joan of Arc that won't have to burn up the stake. Yeah, they Thank need you. me. Thank you. This is the book signing by uh, Malaya Joya. And this will conclude our broadcast from St. Joan of Arc in Minneapolis of the presentation by Malaya Joya.